Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. And yeah, he suffered no consequences. They sent him back to Utah as a uh, organized crime coordinator or something. Grade 14 with two years salary retention, which gave him his I-3, retired out, and nothing happened. That was a reward as far as I'm concerned. No, nothing yeah. close to a punishment. And as a matter of fact, an ATF agent, one of your brothers that helped uh, break that story, was punished. <laughs> oh, John Dodson? <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. Mike? I mean, yeah. that guy was oh, punished. John Dodson's which... head caved in. Yeah, so when people are looking at this, when people are looking at this, I'll give you guys an example. And I'm not, Vince, I, I like you. If we, Whether people like you or don't like you doesn't matter to me. I like you. I like you. I've, I've, I've always liked Mike. Uh, Mike, I look at as like my, you know, my dad or something like that, you know. And the thing is, if you, if you, you know, you're, you're older than me, Mike, so you got to get that. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just teasing you. Yeah, I'm just teasing you. I was looking to see if he caught that or not. Oh, I, I was going to say grandpa, but, but you know. <laughs> hey, thanks. Hey, he could probably kick my butt, but let's, you know. Let me, let me point out, you made my point perfectly. Mm -hmm. The haters of ATF out there, and and I get it. Mm -hmm. Um. Trust me, I get it mm -hmm. um, for shooting ourselves in the foot. But what happened? An agent stepped up, laid his ass on the line, and came clean about all that. Ended up getting transferred a bunch of times. They tried to go after him personally, financially, professionally. They tried to undermine his uh, character publicly and everything. But at the end of the day, he stood up and he said, this is not what we're about. We don't do this. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, somebody, your readers or your followers have to acknowledge that. But for John Dodson and a few others like Mike and some of them, nobody would even know about this. But mm -hmm. they were willing to take the, the beating to go, oh, this, no, I drew the line, I draw the line at this, I took an oath. Yeah, when, 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 it comes to, when it comes to honor, I respect guys like Mike, yourself, and, and, and John, Dodson, John Dodson for doing what he did, and taking the blows from that, from his own fellow agents, right? From the, yeah. from the guys that he served with, like turning their backs on him and all kinds of stuff. What, what I wanted to say to you was, and I'm not trying to paint you guys into a corner, but people, the, the people in general in America looking at all the things happening. Last year, for example, there were cities burning in America. Cities burning. There were people protesting. The protests yeah. got uh, co-opted, and, and the protests led to riots and cities burning and people dying. Now, that same thing happened uh, a week ago in D.C., and when that affected the the politicians out there they said how dare we even think about approaching congress and making them feel uncomfortable how dare we do that now they want to impeach the president they they they're yeah. like deleting platforms and doing democracy runs deep i didn't see one of those protesters at the capitol and i'm not condoning it mm -hmm. i'm just saying I didn't see one of them walk out with a big screen TV. Nobody got new Nikes. Nobody's businesses got destroyed. No police officers were cowering in a building having Molotov cocktails thrown at them. So for them to compare what happened last week, oh, because it, like you said, it affected them. It was not okay. It was not good. But it was a far cry from what happened in Minneapolis, Seattle, Chicago, L.A., San Francisco, far yeah. crop. There was there were people straight up murdered. There were people straight up murdered. People, uh, Antifa and other uh, thugs were out there basically uh, running uh, protection schemes on business owners and taking over people's houses and doing all kinds of stuff. And none of these none of these politicians did anything about it. No. Okay. Well. I mean, I think Trump's tried to do something. I'm not here to defend we Trump or anything like that. that. <laughs> but he tried to do something. I can see, 
with the DOJ ramping up and everybody's trying to get in the good graces of the new administration. Mm -hmm. ATF, FBI, they're all posturing to try to suck up to the Biden administration. Oh, we're going to prosecute to the nth degree these 170 people that went in there. You know, I got no problem with prosecuting them for trespassing or or whatever the violation is, you know, entering Congress without permission, mm -hmm. but trying to make these people out to be terrorists and anarchists. They were the most well-behaved rioters. My friend just told me, one of my ATF friends just said, dude, we get an F in rioting. Because yeah. they were respectful, they were notwithstanding the couple incidents inside the Capitol. That was a pretty weak-ass protest. So how should the people look at this, and where do you guys, I want to know what you think about this specifically, Vince, and then I also want to know what, what Mike think, what his thoughts on this. How should the people of America looking at this, how should they feel about this? Where is the line where you think they should say, no, we're not going to take this anymore, we're not going to allow our government to run over us, and, and even if they use, you know, law enforcement or federal agents or whatever to do that, we're not going to allow it. Like, where's the where is that line? Where's the point? I think we've probably hit that line. Um, there's so much craziness going on out there. But once you start, you know, I'm, I'm a closet military historian and I, I read a lot of books about the world wars and the things that led up to them. And you know, um, with uh, Goebbels being the first one to start clamping down on, you know, media and putting the message out and controlling the message, this foolishness I've seen this week is sickening. And nobody I've talked to disagrees with me. Mm -hmm. Taking people off of social media only those who espouse one side can be accepted and the others are shut down. Our government cannot go that way because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be nasty. Mm -hmm. So what do you, um, what do you think, you know, what do you think you would do if you were the folks out there looking at this? And I'm not trying to get you to say something that, you know, I'm not trying to set no, you up I, or anything I, like that. I think no, people I'm have a right to be, to be angry. But I absolutely would hold the line. I would absolutely blow up my congressman, my senator's phones. I would, if there's a local uh, peaceful protest at a state capitol or a federal building in, a, in your city and Make, make it known so it stings when Biden and them come in. They know, be careful. Mm -hmm. Be careful. You're trotting on people's rights, and they're only going to take so much. Okay. Uh, Mike, what do you think about this? I think uh, we'll know we're in real, real trouble. And, uh, yeah. Uh We'll know we're in trouble when we have police officers refusing to obey orders that they're given, when we have National Guard leaders that are refusing orders because they're saying it's not a lawful order, it's not doesn't fit our, with our Constitution. When we get to that point, then we know it's probably time for us to pick up our rifles. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're a far way away from that right now. And uh, I can tell you one thing. If the Democrats continue on this course, like they are right now, to just burn all their bridges, uh, you have people talking about putting Trump supporters' kids in re-education camps, crap like that, nonsense like this. Um, it's just going to add fuel to the fire. Yeah, I, I see this. So we're, we're still trying to swallow the results that that a guy that stayed in his basement for the last year was able to trounce Trump handily in the election and that he had a bigger turnout of black voters, even more than came out to vote for Obak, uh, Obama, yeah. Obama either, either time. Excuse me, I, and I didn't mean to uh, mispronounce his name, Barack mm -hmm. Obama. Mm -hmm. 
that that we have black voters that are so enthusiastic about Joe Biden or hate Trump so much that they turned out in record numbers. No, I, I don't accept that. And and people say, well, there's no proof there was anything going off. You like, well, hell, there wasn't. It's just that we haven't been able to find the right federal judges to present that evidence to that could do something about it. We haven't been able to find anyone in law enforcement to even say, hey, can we take a pause? There's definitely some things that went wrong here. Look, I can tell you right now, there's still people in America that haven't received things that were sent out to them before Christmas. Why? Think about that. Uh, United States Post Office is, has still lost things. These are the people who were handling, handling ballots. We saw people posting videos that they were doing things. There was all this kind of evidence that went out there, uh, proof that, that uh, voting machines were hacked, all kinds of stuff. And no one said, hey, let's take a look at this. Everyone, including Republicans, including Republicans, have turned their back on Americans. I'm not, look, we all know that Democrats and the left is terrible, right? We all know what they're up to. The most heartbreaking thing, the thing that's the most discouraging to the people out there, is that the folks they thought they were on their side have also turned their back on them. My understanding is they've impeached Trump again, right? Mm -hmm. With the support of Republicans, they've impeached a sitting president in his last week or uh, of presidency. Make no mistake, those um, that group of Republicans who tolerated Trump, rode on his coattail, um, never wanted him in there. He was cleaning up the swamp. He was exposing the corruption and the overspending and the foolishness in government, poor administration decisions before, they didn't want him in there. They're just like, well, he's our guy, so that's who we got to be with right now. But the minute they could cut and run, many of them have. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.